containing more than 2,000 galaxies. And so it goes, as our travels continue to take us deeper into the cosmos. We pass cluster after galactic cluster, each a building block of a far greater framework. A billion years pass. Five billion. Finally, after 10 billion years, we decelerate and pause to observe a theoretical view of the universe's large-scale structure. Countless billions of galaxies are now seen to comprise chains, masses, and thread-like structures that stretch across the cosmos, separated by enormous regions of empty space. It is a spectacular tapestry, so vast and diverse in its design, that the power of its creator must truly surpass all human understanding. From the perspective of size alone, I guess that you could say as human beings, we appear to be little more than microbes, living on a speck of cosmic dust we call the Earth. Here we have a universe that's so incredibly large, and we are incredibly small, so that relatively speaking, our place in the universe is totally insignificant. This was illustrated by the Voyager spacecraft several years ago. Millions of miles from Earth, Voyager 1 looked back and showed us our planet in a way we had never seen it before. It was just a tiny dot engulfed by a single ray of sunlight. And when you look at the picture today, it's not hard to understand how the Old Testament writer David must have felt when he asked God, how could man possibly be important to you? It is a question both timeless and quite logical. For when considered against the inconceivable power and size displayed throughout the universe, any perceptions of personal importance we may hold are easily overwhelmed. Yet God did not create on this awesome scale to frighten or intimidate us with his power. Instead, each night he uses the sheer magnitude of the cosmos to help reveal the enormous significance of every human life. Uh, we're told in the, uh, in the book of Psalms, in the Old Testament, again of the Bible, that the heavens declare the glory, glory of God. We're not told anywhere else that uh, any other part of nature specifically does that as clearly as the heavens do. It's interesting to note that by definition, the very word cosmos means an object of superb craftsmanship or a system of order and harmony. Now that's a wonderful interpretation of exactly what the universe seems to be. God has revealed his creative 
uh, juices, if you will, in the way that he's, he's made diversity and beauty and wonder. And it's there getting our attention, saying, hey, I'm here, look, here's the evidence that I'm here. It's something that the Lord has put out there for each one of us to seek out and come to the conclusion that there must be a designer, there must be a creator. And so consequently, uh, I think most astronomers I've ever met uh, believe there is a God. We may differ in, in our opinions or understanding of just who God is and how involved he is with his creation. But uh, the vast majority of astronomers I do believe recognize that there is a creator. But even though I've met very few atheist astronomers, I've come to realize that merely recognizing that God exists is only the first step toward really understanding him. As we look deeper and deeper into space, the size, splendor, and design we see throughout the universe tells us very clearly that there must be a creator. Yet to understand what that creator is really like, we must employ a different tool of exploration, something that can extend our view beyond what we can learn about God from observing the physical aspects of his creation alone. It's a difficult jump to make when you're, you're going from the world of science, you're going to the world of thought, you're going to the world of physical evidence. You can test things in the laboratory or test ideas or theories. But then when you try to come down to the ultimate questions of the meaning of life, and what our relationship is to God and, and what our responsibilities are. Science has no answers for you there. You have to leave the realm of science and go into some other realm. Now we're talking about the spiritual realm. And our methodology there has to change, our tools have to change, because there's no way that our finite minds could ever accurately discern the true nature of an infinite God. To do that, we needed something beyond our own intellect or experience. So God revealed himself to us in the form of his word, the Bible. Opening a Bible is an experience in some ways comparable to turning a telescope toward the night sky. For like a precisely crafted lens or mirror, the Bible clarifies and expands our understanding, not of planets and galaxies, but of the God who made them. Anyone who reads its pages can begin to discern the deepest feelings and thoughts of the creator of the universe. And as we look beyond the realities of his unmistakable existence and power, we come face to face with a personal loving God who reaches out to each of us with his promises of forgiveness, hope, and eternal life. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. For I am the Lord your God, who says, Do not fear, for I am with you. I will strengthen you and help you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. Truly I say to you, he who believes in me has eternal life. Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. God loves us and cares about us very deeply. The Bible very clearly tells us that. 
And the more you learn about him, the more you realize that here we have a God who's so big and so powerful that he created the universe beyond comprehension in size. But yet at the same time, we have a God that loves us so much and cares for us so much individually that he's promised to meet every need that we'll ever have. For some reason beyond my understanding, we're important to the creator of the universe, and he loves us more than anything else he's ever made. In all of creation, there can be no greater mystery or miracle. Though we inhabit a mere speck of a planet, we are the supreme focus of the creator's attention and care. And as we explore God's celestial masterpiece during the decades to come, new discoveries will undoubtedly enhance our understanding. For we are privileged to see more clearly into space than ever before. And with every stunning glimpse, the universe will continue to reflect both the grandeur of God's creative power and the matchless significance we hold in his eyes. Thank you.